Good morning, middle school. My name is McKenna Mattis, and what I'm going to talk to you about today is not a virtue or a character trait or lessons that I've learned. I'm going to tell you about some people you might know. When I was brainstorming ideas for my chapel, I thought I should probably pick a topic that I knew a lot about. The most repetitive thought that ran through my head was that I could not fall into the cliche chapel trap. I had to do something different. So what do I know a lot about that isn't a sport or a pet or this school? Well, I know a lot about people. More specifically, people who I like and who I admire. My friends, 30 of them. My 30 classmates of the 100th graduating class of Montgomery School are, in my opinion, some of the most fascinating, different, and weird people you can meet. I'm going to share with you something about each and every one of them that I admire or that has impacted me. When you hear your name, eighth graders, I invite you to stand up. <laughs> the first person on my list is Samantha Marie Bonnell. Sammy is the most outgoing and spontaneous person ever. I absolutely adore Sammy's effortless comedy, but the thing that I admire most about her is her determination. I've seen so much growth in Sammy through the past few years. I know it sounds like I'm a teacher, but it's true. She's pushed through all of the tough things in her life and prevailed with not only good grades, but a good heart. The second person on my list is our 6-7 president, Liam Brassington. <laughs> Not here. All right. Well, anyways, Liam is a gentleman. He's polite, intelligent, and interesting. He has a knack for giving long speeches and somehow managing to make them funny and lively. The thing I admire most about Liam is his tremendous leadership skills and for always being a good friend. As simple as that may be, a good friend is all you need sometimes. Nick Cavalieri is a person who needs no introduction. Nick is crazy and funny, and he doesn't really care what you think about him. Whether it's lighting his Algebra One book on fire or writing about Chuck Norris and language arts, Nick has never failed to put a smile on my face. If you didn't already know, Will Christ is a wizard with technology. <laughs> I can always count on him to tell me what internet browser is the best or that I should get a Samsung instead of an iPhone. Whenever my computer has a spaz attack, he is the first person I go to, and he is always willing to help. Will is also hilarious, and has most recently changed his name on a play I was writing to, to Will is the best person ever. So thank you, Will, for all of your help. Mara Cunliffe is a person who I admire a lot. She is very strong-willed, independent, and her projects never cease to amaze me. She's kind to everyone and always has confidence in herself. Despite all this, she has an amazing fashion sense. So shout out to Mara for being totally awesome. When I think about the word responsibility, I think of one person and one person only. That person is Georgia Dom, who has taught me the meaning of the word. She's the most diligent worker, and I always get excited to work in group projects with her because I know we'll accomplish a lot. With the combination of her organization and her intelligence, I have no doubt that she'll end up going to Harvard. Anisha DeVos is living proof that hard work pays off. She is the only person I know who likes to study for tests four weeks in advance, but it's obviously worth it because she gets 100s or better on basically everything. She has a lot of necessary self-discipline. For instance, the day before the trimester, she was like, darn, I have an A, the struggle of being Anisha. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I will always admire her hard work and determination. Hands down, the greatest basketball player of all time is Emma Diaz. She's also insane at Halo and can throw a football farther than all the boys in the school. <laughs> Under all of Emma's amazing talents, I've come to discover an independent girl who is never anybody but herself. I admire the strength she has to speak her mind and never question who she is. She has helped me through everything, from keeping me awake during icy prep to always encouraging me to be myself. Matt Eaglehouse, or I like to call him Meagle, is the sweetest kid ever. And not just because his grandparents own a creamery, because he's just a genuinely good guy. Even though his handwriting is nearly illegible, I still admire him and his contagious positive attitude. <sighs> Azaria Ford came to Montgomery School in sixth grade, but honestly, it feels like she's been here forever. She's the most positive girl I know, and she can always make people smile. I feel as if she really connects our grade together to make us a complete family. Azari is an amazing friend, a noble leader, and also pretty great at making you shriek from her horror stories. <sighs> Honestly, I would love to talk to you about the real Claire Gola forever, 
But unfortunately, I was given a time restraint on this chapel. Claire is funny and witty and smart. She's a lethal weapon on the sports field, and she always keeps me, or tries to keep me, from procrastinating, procrastinating rather than working. The thing I love most about Claire is that she will never stop helping me to become the best I can possibly be. She pushes me like a sister, but I couldn't thank her enough for doing that. I wouldn't be the person I am today without her support. I truly feel bad for anyone who hasn't had the pleasure of knowing Grace Gordon. I've gotten to know Grace just a little bit over the past few years, when we were kind of roommates in sixth grade and have been on the same soccer team for the past three years. I've gotten to know someone who I absolutely adore and could not live without. One of the many things I've learned from Grace is that sometimes you need to forget whatever you're doing and just have fun. But you should worry about chewing meatballs before you swallow them, because Grace is maybe a little bit too relaxed when she choked on an entire meatball and had to be heimlicked by Miss McGinnis. <laughs> I've shared more laughs with Grace than I have with anyone else, and I can never thank her enough for making me nothing but happy. Fritz Gessel and I have always been slightly competitive with each other. <laughs> it all started in sixth grade, when he was the head of the Average Joe's math team, and I was the head of the Purple Cobras. Every math class, we judged our team's victories on how fast we could solve equations on our whiteboards. I'm going to be honest and say that I'm pretty sure the, the Purple Cobras were the victors of sixth grade math, but Fritz and I's competitive flame has not yet been extinguished. The thing I admire most about Fritz Gessel is his relentless goals to do and be the best. He is one of the most motivated people I've ever met. Delis Hernandez came to our school only last year as a shy and immensely new kid, or immensely shy kid. As I've gotten to know him more, I've realized that he is a very persistent and diligent worker. During math, when he gets an equation wrong, he is always determined to get it right. He is also very courteous and always holds open the door or asks, asks if everyone needs any help. I'm very happy that Dallas came to our school. Many of you may not know this, but Danny Hemsworth and I are both big fans of reality TV and The Office. Danny and I have pretty intense conversations about how sad we were that Michael Scott left The Office and that I should apparently start watching Big Brother. I know that Danny is an expert on The Office, but he's an, also an expert on basically everything else. So thanks to Danny for enlightening me with information about the most random, yet most interesting topics. Jack Kowalski is one of those people who is extremely laid back and easy to talk to. We like to have sentimental conversations about how sad it's gonna be when we all go to different schools next year. He's also my biological son, which is a very long story, but that makes him even more obligated to endure all different varieties of conversation. Jack and I are also members of our late seventh grade stomp band, which is also a very long story. I've had so much fun during the past year, and even though he's only been here for a year, it feels like he's been with us since kindergarten. For my little speech on Simone Carustus, I want to take you back to a time where we didn't know what brushes were, and we thought smiley face t-shirts were high fashion. This age was fourth grade. Although we may have looked like a crossover of a hippie and a hobo, we had a lot of fun. Our craziness equaled each other out. Simone is still one of the craziest people ever, but it's a good thing. She's also pretty amazing at soccer and the only person I would want sitting next to me in language arts. Taking Crane is a person I would describe as quiet but mighty. It's taken me three years to come across her fiery and spunky attitude. She's a courageous girl who has an amazing talent for art and being good at basically everything. She's a phenomenal skier also. Although I admire all of her talents quite a bit, the thing I admire most about Tegan is her sense of precision and accuracy. If you look back there, see that blue bird? Um, I decided that I wanted to paint in all of the big parts so I could let Tegan do all of the hard stuff. So that's Tegan's work. <laughs> Everything she seems to do seems to have a dainty accuracy that I could never manage to pull off. Lara Lewis is a girl full of mystery. I always get excited when she starts talking because I know she'll say something really interesting. I've come to notice that she's only quiet when she doesn't feel comfortable, but when she does, she's a ball full of energy and fun. As I was observing Sean McDonald over the past few days, I came to the conclusion that he is extremely passionate about everything that he does. Whether it's talking about a math problem to talking about his favorite video games, Sean always has lights in his eyes. <laughs> He puts 100% effort into everything that he does. Back in sixth grade, I used to think Oliver Mayer 
was the negative Nancy. <laughs> Thinking back on these years, I don't know why, because Oliver is nothing but a pleasure to be around. He's pretty quiet unless he's around his closest friends, and he always has something nice to say. I've worked in several group projects with Oliver, and whatever we're doing, he seems to make it fun and funny. Last year, we also discovered that Oliver is pretty fast. I wasn't too pleased with this, because I don't like when people get a faster 50-yard dash time than me, but Oliver was modest and actually congratulated me on my time. So thank you, Oliver, for always being so considerate. Although she wasn't with us in fifth, sixth, and seventh grade, it seemed like Madison O'Donnell had never left when she returned this year. Madison is hilarious, full of energy, and a great person to talk to. She's a bold character who is never timid. I had the pleasure of being Madison's, in Madison's fourth grade class, where we took on projects to, about bog turtles and Vikings. I can always count on Madison to tell me what's going on and to keep me in a happy mood. She is the sunshine during a rainstorm. I used to think that Ryan Corman was a shy person, but my opinion has completely flipped around in the past year. Witnessing him reading stories about apocalypse to making Henry Ford sound witty during our American Studies boardroom has made me realize how outgoing Ryan actually is. He is always cracking jokes and making other people happy. Joseph Jabari is the nicest person in the universe. <laughs> and this is a, not an exaggeration at all. Let me paint a picture. Lonely McKenna is sitting in Mrs. Vesey's room, all alone, and she's been working on the same math problem that she's been trying to figure out for 15 minutes. She looks like she's just woken up from hibernation, but Jill walks over and says, do you need any help, McKenna? Well, this is just one uh, scenario of the many Joe to the rescue situations I've been in. Honestly, I cannot thank him enough for all the kind deeds he has done for me, and I strive to be as polite and positive as Joe. Connor Stockenberg is the type of guy who has fun with everything. Whatever he is doing, he manages to make the best of it and have a good time. He is always energetic and happy and always in a good mood. Noah Thies is an example of all natural, God-given comedic talent. Somehow he manages to say something that is so unimportant, but makes everyone laugh, and I don't even think he means to. <laughs> he also has a God-given talent for absorbing all information that has any relevance to history. I can't help but eavesdrop on his fascinating conversations with Mrs. Shellhorn about the latest news on ISIS, or anything that has to do with weaponry. Overall, Noah is a fascinating person. Nikki Vertigan is a girl who I can count on with everything. She cares about people so much. Whenever I'm staring into space, but I probably look like I've just seen a depressing Gossip Girl episode, Nikki always comes up to me and asks me if I'm okay. I'm so thankful to have someone with such a big heart as one of my friends. She always lifts me up when I'm down and always makes me feel special with her endless compliments. Ethan Waite finally stepped out of his comfort zone in sixth grade when he started using, using his singing and performing talents in public. <laughs> At the time, no one in the school was aware of his talent. Everyone discovered his musical gift when he performed I Got the Music in Me for the first time at fame night. Ethan blew everyone away then and still continues to blow us away now. Amanda Wagner defines the word wit. The combination of her ever so vast knowledge and her wicked humor make for one entertaining girl. She's at the top of the list of the people I want to work with when I'm older because our ideas always seem to bounce off each other. She makes me smarter and is so fun to be around. She may be sensational at math and science, but she's also an exceptional writer. I think that if you split her head in half and pulled out her brain, you would find millions of creative ideas buzzing everywhere. <laughs> Some of the stuff she writes is so new and genius, I sometimes doubt that she's even human. I will forever be jealous of Amanda, which, makes, which is good, because I'll always have someone to strive to be equivalent to. The last person I want to discuss today is Aiden Woolley. I've known Aiden since I was three months old, and I wish I could say we've been friends through all these years, but I can't. <laughs> Aiden and I fight like siblings, because honestly, I consider him to be my long-lost, 20 days younger than me brother. There are some good traits about a long-lost, 20 days younger than me brother, like always having each other's back. No matter what, Aiden is always my number one supporter. I can go to Aiden with anything. We always help each other out, and he has taught me that good friends can last a lifetime. All 30 of the amazing people who I just talked about are all so special and unique. 
They all have greatly impacted who I am as a person, and they will all forever have a place in my heart. Without every single one of them, we wouldn't be the class of 2015. We wouldn't be a family without every single brother and sister. I would like to leave you with a quote by myself. <laughs> this class is like a puzzle. Some pieces may be missing, but the others still connect. But if you look at the big picture in the end, the picture is not complete. Every piece is a piece that is meaning, and every piece is a piece that is needed. Thank you, and have a nice day.